Special thanks to Speedcube Shop for sending me the cubes shown in the video. In the description, you can find a discount code as well as links to buy the cubes if you're interested. The Chi Wu Tui has long dominated the 4x4 market, and while there have been good budget 4x4s, the Wu Tui was so good that the budget options just weren't worth it. But the Wu Tui had one weakness, it was quite slow. So when the Aosu GTS was released, we were all hyped for a new flagship 4x4 from Moyu, a company known for making super fast cubes. But as we all know, it didn't live up to its hype. And now we have the new Aosu GTS 2M, which is actually quite good. So today I'll be comparing the GTS 2M with what has been the best 4x4 in recent history, the Chiyi Wu Chui M. So starting off with the price, the Wu Chui is $22 and the GTS 2 is $30. The Wu Chui is $8 cheaper and coincidentally $8 is actually the price of a magnetic conversion kit. So clearly the Wu Chui is the way to go price wise even if you want to magnetize it yourself. But if you want magnets and you don't want to do it yourself, the GTS 2M is $45 which is actually $3 cheaper than the Wu Chui M due to being mass produced as magnetic. But the Supernova Wu Chui M already comes set up with lube and all that so it depends on on whether or not you think the extra $3 is worth that. So overall, on just the price, the Wu Chui is looking pretty good. But now let's take a look at some other areas. The Wu Chui is 62 millimeters and the GTS 2 is 61 millimeters. When you actually take a look at them side by side, they're almost the same size, but because the GTS 2 has more rounded edges compared to the Wu Chui, then it makes it feel smaller in your hands. And if one millimeter doesn't seem like a lot to you, the GAN 354 and the Volk only differ by one millimeter and a half. So every millimeter matters a lot. Speaking of smaller cubes, there's also the Mini Wu Chui at 60mm compared to 62 on the regular Wu Chui, but the Mini Wu Chui just doesn't even feel like a Wu Chui to me. In a bad way. So now we'll be comparing the corner cutting, and you can see that for both of them, they cut just under 45 degrees, and for the inner layers, they both cut just about line to line. Now for reverse corner cutting, you can see in both of these that the Wu Chui can actually corner cut just a little bit more. However, I don't know if breaking in is a factor for this because my Wu Chui has been broken in over months and my GTS 2 has only been broken in for less than a week. Now, what might be a more meaningful comparison is how I feel turning both of these during a solve. And for the most part, during the Yao stage and the 3x3 stage, both of these are great. The main difference, which is only a slight difference, is inner slice moves, which are really important for Yao centers in order to reduce your move count. So slice moves are a bit unique because if you need to corner cut during a slice move, then it uses reverse corner cutting and regular corner cutting at the same time, which means that even if there's good regular corner cutting, there has to also be good reverse corner cutting, otherwise it's not going to corner cut that. So with the Wu Chui, the reverse corner cutting tends to be better, specifically cases like this where that's about half a QB over and it can still corner cut slice moves. Now on the GTS 2, if I go about half a piece over like that, then it doesn't really cut. So that's a minor difference, but it's pretty much the only difference in their corner cutting ability. So because of that, I'm gonna say corner cutting on the Wu Chui is better. Now for speed, the GTS 2 is quite a bit faster out of the box, and in fact a little bit faster than I'd like it to be, but definitely within an acceptable range. The Wu Chui on the other hand is a lot slower out of the box and takes a lot of breaking in before it starts to speed up even just a bit. And I'm talking about how fast it feels with a fast lube in there already. Having used the Aosu GTS 2 for a few days, I'd say its speed is a lot closer to the ideal 4x4 speed. It is a bit fast, but I'll definitely take this over the speed of the Wu Chui, which is just too far on the slower side. Actually, having a faster speed on a cube gives a few advantages that are not super obvious. For example, the faster inner layer speed has improved my consistency with parity algorithms, and it also makes practicing for long periods of time a lot easier on my hands. As I was filming solves for this video, I just started the session, so my hands were not tired at all, and using the GTS 2 was totally fine, but with the Wu Chui, after like 10 solves, I felt like I had to take a break. So the GTS 2 speed is definitely better. Now we're gonna be comparing control for both of these cubes. Normally, cubes that turn faster are harder to control since you can easily overshoot. And it makes sense that fast cubes are this way because if you lose control, that probably means the speed of the cube is beyond what you can handle. Even though the GTS 2 is faster than I'd like, I don't think it's harder to control. And that's because with the Wu Chui, there's undershooting. Now undershooting is not a thing you would normally realize because if you undershoot, you'd probably just turn harder. But the problem with turning harder is because if you have to put more effort into your turns, it's possible that that is causing you to slow down. I think in the past I was just okay with the Wu Chui being a bit slow, so I became more deliberate in my turning. 
but thinking back on it now, that extra effort did actually make me turn slower. And I realized this when I went from the GTS2 back to the Wuchui and realized that I was undershooting my turns. And if I tried to correct that, then I would actually get slower turning speed. So I was being complacent due to hardware which is okay when there's no better hardware. But now with the GTS 2 it's actually really easy to turn fast because the cube is forgiving when I do it. So with the slower Wuchui, it just feels easier to control because I was being forced to turn slower. But if I had to go fast from either cube, and obviously I would prefer to go fast, then I'd choose the GTS 2 because it doesn't undershoot when I try to go fast. So in the end, a faster cube isn't always harder to control. It may feel like slower cubes are easier to control, but really you're just being forced to slow down. That's not always true for 3x3 because 3x3s are way faster than 4x4s to begin with, even the slow ones. But on bigger cubes, the typical speed is slow, so having a fast cube is really a big upgrade. So ultimately, the GTS 2's faster speed is a huge factor in my ability to turn exactly how I want. And being able to turn how I want is what control means. But with that being said, the reverse corner cutting being slightly worse on the GTS 2 does take away from the control factor just a bit. So for control, I'm gonna give a slight edge to the GTS 2, even though they are better in different aspects. So I actually average faster on the GTS 2, so it's my new main. Now don't get me wrong, I love the Wuchui. It has been the best cube on the market for years, and it could still be the best cube on the market for some people. But okay, real talk, you don't even understand what it takes for me to make a video like this. With 3x3s, they're all so good that sometimes with a new cube, I'll just like it more than I should. But on 4x4 and up, I really hate trying new cubes because I don't know if they're good until they're like fully broken in. So basically anytime I get a new big cube, the odds are all stacked against it to become my main. But with the GTS 2, I was really impressed in the first few days. If you're interested, there's a link in the description to buy the cube and there's a discount code as well. And if you actually click on the link in the description, then it lets Cube Shop know that I sent you. And now the last few things, I also have shirts, hoodies, mugs, and other merch link in the description and you can get 10% off until October 14th, so don't miss out. Lastly, I'd like to thank my $5 and up patrons on screen. And if you haven't heard already, then I've added live streaming and a Discord server to Patreon. So if you're interested in that or just want to support this channel, you can head over to patreon.com slash jperm and even like a $1 pledge would be hugely appreciated. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys all next time.